old have had the coronavirus and recovered. We also know that millions more have probably had the virus and not even known it. But does exposure to COVID-19, does it make us immune? There's now mounting evidence that being infected with the coronavirus does not prevent a reinfection. In Hong Kong, a 33-year-old man contracted the virus in April and recovered. When he returned from a trip to Spain in August, he tested positive again. Doctors say it's the first documented case of reinfection. Some people ask if they'll be immune to the virus forever after they recover. There wasn't a clear answer before, but now it's very clear. After your first infection, there'll always be a chance you'll get infected again. Well, scientists today reported two more cases of patients in the Netherlands and Belgium catching COVID-19 a second time. But the World Health Organization is urging calm here, saying reinfections are not likely to happen too often. The important, other important thing to note is the numbers are very, very small. So this is one documented case in over 23 million, and we will probably see other documented cases. But it seems to be uh, not a, a regular event. We would have seen many more cases. Well, my next guest tonight is a familiar face to our viewers. He's a trusted voice in all questions concerning the coronavirus pandemic. Dr. John Campbell joins me tonight from Carlisle, England. Dr. Campbell, it's good to see you again. Um, you too. How worried should we be about reinfection? I mean, I was thinking today, we catch the common cold through a virus many times in our lives. We do, but the common cold virus changes very quickly and there's various forms of it and there's a rapid mutation rate in that particular form of virus. Now, what these studies have done is they've unequivocally proved that someone can have coronavirus infection with COVID-19 and get it a second time. And we have conclusive proof that this has happened three times out of 23 to 24 million cases. So I really think we have to keep this in perspective. Now, this isn't, really this isn't really surprising. We've had anecdotal cases of people being reinfected before, but the difference is these first three cases that we have, the one in Hong Kong, as you say, the one in the Netherlands and the one in Belgium, these have been officially confirmed by phylogenetic analysis. The scientists have looked at the genetics of the virus mm -hmm. and they've known that the virus the person was infected the first time is a different genetic strain to the virus they've been infected with the second time. So we know that this happens, but we have to bear in mind that we also know that coronavirus does induce an immunological reaction. We know it induces surface acting antibodies. We know it induces in most people, the immunoglobulin antibodies in the blood and perhaps most most importantly of all, we also know it induces a T cell response, which is much more likely to be long lived. So I think it's very much a time to keep this in perspective. Mm -hmm. We are talking about three cases. Now, I do expect there to be more documented cases. But we have to bear in mind, we've had a high index of suspicion of this for some time now. We've been looking out for this. And a lot of people have been tested and retested. And yet these are only the first three definitive cases that have been confirmed by the microbiologists and virologists. Dr. Campbell, what does this reinfection, what does it mean, if anything, for the efficacy of a vaccine? Mm. Well, if people were to be reinfected regularly, then that means they would not have a sustained immunological response. So they could catch the virus, the immune system would basically forget how to recognise that virus, and then they would recatch it. And of course, all a vaccine does is, is imitate the natural infection. So if people were to get reinfected because the immunity faded, then people could be vaccinated. And then within a few months or who knows how long, three, four months or, or six months or so, then they could be reinfected again if the immune response was not long lived. But at the moment, I think the evidence suggesting that the immune response is long lived is much more than these individual cases because we don't know the full details of these cases yet. The Hong Kong case, for example, is all rather strange. It's only circulating on social media at the moment. It's not a peer-reviewed paper as yet. Mm -hmm. I expect it to be, but it's just strange that it hasn't even been formally released in preprint, and yet the world's press is talking about this. But you can understand this because the implications are very significant. Mm -hmm. And if immunity was to fade, then that means herd immunity wouldn't be able to be generated as well, and we could be stuck with this virus reinfecting people for a long 
long, long time. But I think the balance of evidence at the moment is saying that there will be immunity. And we're already seeing some of the epidemiological benefits of herd immunity in some parts of the world, such as New York, where a level of herd immunity combined with the control measures, the hand washing, the distancing, the mask wearing, are combining to reduce the amount of infections that we're seeing. Dr. Kim, I've got about 30 seconds. Let me ask you, um, could the vaccine for coronavirus be like the flu vaccine, the flu shot, that we have to get it every year? I've got about 30 seconds. Yeah, I suspect not, because there's many different sorts of flu viruses, but there's only one sort of coronavirus, coronavirus COVID-19. So I strongly suspect that is not the case. I remain optimistic about the vaccine. All right, always optimistic. Dr. John Campbell, it's always good speaking with you, Dr. Campbell. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the day is almost done. The conversation